The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country. A villain, big and bold, and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down, and laugh when he's conquered and won. Of course, we all know about the crap Los Angeles Chargers defensive end Joey Bosa talked about Las Vegas Raiders quarterback Derek Carr. Following the Chargers' 28-14 win over the Raiders in Week 4, he was pretty offensive toward Carr, saying he curled up into a fetal position even before the rush got there. So now, there are many in Raider Nation that want to see Carr have a big game to get back at Bosa and the Chargers. But Bosa is speaking from the comfortable position of being able to adversely affect Carr's game. So Raider right tackle Brandon Parker, whom he'll be lined up in front of most of Sunday night, is a very important man. A lot of Carr's night depends on how much time the offensive line gives him. While left tackle Colton Miller has done his part protecting Carr and his edge, Parker has struggled mightily holding down his edge in pass protection this year. A good bull rush in hands give him trouble and that's what Bosa does best. Parker hasn't been the greatest of run blockers either. So Parker needs to have the game of his life against Bosa to stop him from wrecking the game on Carr and the Raider offense. Parker is a big part of why the Raider running game has struggled this year. Most running plays are called to the strong side where he's lined up. And too often, the push just isn't there. And even when the play isn't called to his side, he gets tossed around and his man makes the play. Not a lot of push, not a lot of space, and the running back has to fight for his. Here he doesn't do too well on the reach block to try to cut his man off. And here, I can't even tell you what he was trying to do. Here he starts off pretty well, but it doesn't end very well. And like I said before, the bull rush gives him problems. Melvin Ingram, then with the Steelers, is going to lift them off the ground here. And you already know what happens when you get hit with the Khalil Mack bull rush. That's what happens when you overset and you don't drop your button anchor. Then when Ingram sees him later in the year after he gets traded to the Chiefs, what do you think he's going to do? This time, Carson going to get up out of there and get the ball to Renfro. Now if you watch him the whole time here, he's going to end up on his back. This is dangerous because Carr can get his knee blown out on a play like this. Here he gets taken right back to Carr and his man disturbs the throw. And he just gets straight up wrecked on this one. Watch Miles Garrett bench press him here. And here he gets victimized by Micah Parsons. Another thing he has problems with, like I said before, is good hands.
Here his man's going to keep his hands off him with a cross drop and he's going to spin back inside for the sack. Oh. This is some easy work right here. But luckily Carl was able to get rid of it. And here he's going to get dealt with with a one arm stab. And here Parsons hits him with a little side swipe. And here, his man takes Parker's hands off of him and slaps the ball. Now Sunday against the Colts, he was pretty good in the running game. Here he gets a little push on the combo block. I'm not going to say he was a mauler Sunday, but he did enough. Here he helps running back Josh Jacobs get in the end zone. And he must have had some big time adrenaline on that last drive to set up the field goal. And even though his man makes the tackle here, he still gets a little push. So we just might see something from him in the running game next time out. I want to say the same thing about pass protection, but I can't. Look at that easy work right there, but Carr gets it to Jacobs. Here he's going to get his hand swiped and countered back inside. He's going to get overpowered here. And you can't possibly get put on your back when you're double teaming somebody, right? Wrong. And Carr's biggest play of the game was no thanks to Parker who missed the stunt. And he is going to see Bosa, who was solid against the run. He just keeps guys off him with his hands. When you have hands like that, you can play the run and rush the passer. Here he's going to get off the ball quick and penetrate. And here with those hands, he's going to take on the pulling guard and not stay blocked. And he's disciplined, so he does a good job of playing the spread option. He's just going to miss the quarterback here, but watch this bull rush. Parker has to learn to anchor for that. Here's another bull back to the quarterback and got him. That's that bull rush again right there. And that's the sack fumble. He's going to overpower his man and get my homes here. Here he's coming with the half bull. That means he's gonna attack his inside shoulder and Big Ben has to play hot potato with it. Now here is the handwork that he's known for. And Mahomes gotta get up out of there. And 
and he's going to disrupt Mahomes' throw with his handwork here. And rookie Alex Leatherwood, then at right tackle in week four, no chance. Here, he's coming over the guard. He's going to swim him. And this swipe for the sack here is easy work. Parker got to get ready for that. Parker has really struggled in pass protection this year. He's already not the strongest guy in the world, and he compounds that by not dropping his butt and anchoring a bull rush. He also gets outdone by good hands, and he often misses stunts. And he'll be seeing Bosa, who has a good bull rush and some of the best hands in the NFL on Sunday night. Can he help keep Carr upright so he can have the night that he needs to have to beat the Chargers? Thank you for watching. See you next time.